Hello everyone. Today I'm here to talk about LEDs or light emitting diodes. So you might ask yourself, what is a diode? Is that relevant? Yes. Okay. Because an LED is not like a light bulb. It's a completely different creature. So let's talk about that. A light bulb is really a resistor that has been tuned so the energy output is in the visible light spectrum instead of heat. Another example of a resistor you would deal with on a normal day-to-day -day basis is an electric stove. The burner on an electric stove is nothing but a big resistor tuned to put out heat instead of light. Okay? And we'll talk more about what resistance is in a little bit. So let's talk about what a diode is. A diode is a device that only allows electricity to flow through it in one direction. You try to put electricity through it in the wrong direction, it just blocks it. Okay? And an LED is a diode, which means electricity only goes through it in one direction. So, we have to have some idea which direction the electricity goes. So I got out one of my 10 millimeter LEDs. This is a half watt LED. And let's zoom in on a little bit so I can talk about her. All right, that's perfect right there. First, this is one of the bigger LEDs you're going to find because it is a 10 millimeter. The long leg is the positive. I think that's called the anode. The short leg is the negative. I think that's called the cathode. If I'm wrong, I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments below the video. Okay? And the light is emitted up here at the top. Now, it is imperative that you hook these up the right way. If you don't, you won't get any light. But don't worry, if you come up, hook them up backwards, they won't burn out. They're a dial. They're just blocking the electricity from flowing. And that can actually be useful. We'll talk about that when we get into timing chips in a future video. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give this guy some power. I'm hooking him up to my little power supply here. Okay. I have a kitten who thinks he needs attention right now. You'll hear him squeaking in the background a little bit. Let's turn it on. Right now I'm feeding her three volts. This is a white LED, so it's going to have a three volt range to it. Now, voltage. What the hell is that, some of you are asking. So let me turn this off and get where I can talk to you guys. There's an equation that works for LEDs. It's called Ohm's Law. V equals IR. We're going to put the equation right there. V equals IR. Now, let's explain the different components. Let's start with voltage. All right? Voltage is really, this isn't 100% true, so you technical people out there, just bear with me. This is for the non-technical. Voltage is like energy. It's energy that drives the circuit. Okay? You can think of it as a water pump, pumping the water up top of a hill and then we're allowing the water to flow down. Voltage pumps the water up to the top of the hill. And then water can flow down the hill. It can do all sorts of useful things for us as it flows down the hill. I is current. That's the, what current is in electricity is flowing electrons. It's electrons moving through the circuit. Okay? And you can think of it as water flowing down the hill. It's the actual water flowing down the hill. R is resistance, okay? What resistance is, is a stealing energy out of the circuit to do work. For instance, a pure resistor will take energy out of the circuit and convert it to heat, all right? Whereas an LED steals energy out of the circuit and converts it to light. A little bit of heat, but mainly light. That's a big deal about LEDs, is they don't produce as much heat as other lighting sources do. Like right here, I have a compact fluorescent lamp, and it's producing some heat. A lot more heat than an LED of the same wattage would produce. Okay? Because the LED is more efficient at converting to light. But I digress. Okay? Now let's talk about this relationship a little bit further. So I can explain things to some of you, and why you care about the V, and why you care about the R. Okay, and you've probably never even heard of the I. We have V equals I R. Now, what happens if you put too much energy into the circuit? Well, the electrons are capable of doing more work. Makes sense, right? And when we're dealing with an LED, the resistance is fixed. And if we want to find out what that resistance is, your typical white LED like this little guy right here and I got a bunch of them lined up so I can go through different 
types of LEDs with you guys in a second. He's going to require 3.2 volts to be efficient and he's going to consume 20 milliamps of current. The little 20 MA you see attached to LEDs is for current. All right. So if I use V equals IR, 3.2 equals 20 milliamps times R. I can figure out what the R of that LED is. So I'm going to take 3.2 and I'm dividing it by the 20 milliamps. Let me think for a second. Milli means move it back three places, 20 up, 2, this so is 0.02. I get 160 ohms for the resistance. All right. Now, what happens if I raise the current up above 3.2 volts? This is what happens. You're now putting too much energy in the circuit, which means electrons are capable of doing more than that 20 milliamps of work. Okay. When you give them more than that 20 milliamps of work, they burn things up. What happens if I give it one volt instead of 3.2? Well, there's not enough energy in the electrons to get the thing to light up, so we don't see any light. Okay, so it's important to get the voltage correct. Now, one thing to keep in mind, and this, this is what happens, if I increase the voltage here, the resistance is comp constant. Remember, the equation is V equals IR. I'm going to keep it up in this corner up here for a little while. V equals IR. So if I increase the V, I'm increasing the I. The R is constant. Increasing the I means more energy and you burn things up. Too many electrons burn things up. It's like too much water in a pipe and it's going to burst and start leaking. Basically the same analogy. When you're burning up an LED, it can no longer contain all those elect electrons and they're, they're getting out and they're burning things up. That's what's happening. All right. Now if I lower V, I lower I. So that's what we're trying to do in our circuits. I'm doing a 12 volt circuit for the Millennium Falcon. I'm going to have plenty of LEDs floating around in there. And I can't have them at 12 volts. So I've got to lower. I want the V at 12 volts, which is too high, but I've got to get this I down. So what we're going to do is bring the R up, keeping the I constant this time. And this is why we add more resistors to the circuit. Now, calculating this, this isn't always the easiest thing in the world to do. So what I'm going to do is put a website, and I'm looking up here for the website right now, guys. I forgot to put it up here beforehand. I'm going to put a link to the website at the bottom of the video, and I'm going to post this over at Scale Model Addict as well. I'm going to put a link to the website there. No screenshots in the video. Uh, I don't want to violate anyone's copyright, and I haven't had time to ask them if I can use their website in the video. But I can give you the web address. It's led.linear1.org backslash led.wiz. Now, I'll spell it out completely. led.linear1.org backslash led.wiz. I'll put it up here too, so you guys can see it go across the screen. All right? Now what you can do here is you can put the voltage your LED requires in there. You can put the voltage that you're giving your power supply. You can put the current the LED requires, which is here. Let's let's I'm going to do it on the wizard and tell you what it tells me. Source voltage is going to be 12 volts. Okay? Diode forward voltage is going to be 3.2. That's the voltage my LED wants to have. It doesn't want the 12 volts. 12 volts, too many electrons, burning up the LED. Bad. Diode forward current, that's the 20 milliamps, and it wants it in milliamps, so you just type in 20. The number of LEDs in my array, right now it's going to be 1, because I want to know what resistance I need for 12 volts. And then I hit design my array. It tells me I want a 470 ohm resistor. So, 470 ohms in resistance. Remember, my voltage is way up here. I want my current down here. I'm bringing my resistance up by 470 ohms so they match to keep my current down. And this is why we add the extra resistor to the circuit. Now, what do resistors look like, you might ask? This is what they look like. Okay? I don't know the specific reading of this. There's color bands on there. You can learn how to look resistors up with color bands. I don't. I just cheat. I just get my ohm meter out and measure the resistance with the ohm meter. It's easier for me. I don't have to think and look things up. Um, now that we've done all that, another thing I want to talk about 
is different types of, re of LEDs. Your white, your blue, your green, yeah, the white, blue, green LEDs, the purple, they're all going to require about 3 to 3.2 volts. All right. Your red, your yellow, your orange, they're all going to require 2 to 2.2 volts. So you have to keep that in mind when you're putting LEDs in the circuit. You're going to have to adjust the resistor more on a red, yellow, or orange LED than you are on a white, blue, or green, or purple. It's just the way things are with these things. That the, the red ones don't require as much energy to light up. The um, I don't I've, I've read the origin of the LED before. I know it's a crystal, and someone um, just made this crystal in the laboratory one day, screwing around, got it to light up, and was amazed. And the reason the red, the yellow, and the orange LEDs require less voltage is it's closer to the native crystal. They're putting impurities in the crystal to get these other colors to come out. All right. Now, what you can do is look up a voltage chart on the internet for different LEDs, what voltage they take, what their current is. I can't put one in the video because I haven't typed one up and don't have time to type one up. But they're easy enough to find. If I can find one real quick, I'll put a link for it down at the bottom of the video as well. Now, let's try an experiment so you guys can see how things really work. I've got my wires here to my power supply. And what I have in hand right here is a blue LED. It's a 3 millimeter LED. And I have a red one. They're tiny little guys. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line their positives up together and their negatives up together and I'm going to wire them together on my power supply. So that's what I'm doing right now. And I'm doing this so I can show you guys a few things. Okay? And I'm going to have to be careful with this because they can't touch each other too much here or we won't have any light. We'll have shortages, that sort of thing, and we don't want any shortages. And once I get this thing arranged, I can't move it around too much without getting shorts. And it looks like I didn't think this through beforehand. I'm going to have to do some bending to get this to work properly. Thusly, I know you guys can't, you can kind of see I'm fiddling with it. Or I could cheat a little bit, and I think that'll be more efficient with our time. Let me cheat. I'm getting my breadboard out, and you're going to have to ignore part of my breadboard. It's got some circuits set up for my timing videos. All right, so I'm going to put the positive negative in my breadboard. I'll explain how to use a breadboard when I do the timing chip videos. They're not real hard to use at all. Actually, they're very, very easy to use. All right, and I'm going to steal some wires out of my breadboard. I got a positive lead here. I have a negative lead here. And we're going to hook the positive up to the positive. We're going to hook the negative up to the negative, and I'm going to move the camera so you guys can see it, dim the lights, and power on. Power's on. We're at one volt. Nothing. Nothing whatsoever. Not surprised by that, simply because I haven't given her much in the way of power. One volt is not enough to get these guys lit, all right? And what we're looking for is right here. All right, so let's go to two volts. And, ooh, we're at four volts. Not good. We don't have a positive connection here, or we would have lidage. All right, let me pause this, start up again when I get it working.